Today I'm going to show you how to make or repair your very own chainsaw chains. Links correctly, this will come with it. Wives and girlfriends all over the world are going to be very happy that your husbands are not going to need to buy any new tools to do this job. We can do this with probably everything that we have in our shop. So, a quick recap. To make our own chains, why make our own chains? Well, we can do it for about half the cost of buying a store-bought chain. It's actually a little bit less than half, so it's worth doing it. You can buy chains by the roll, a 25 to 100 foot rolls, and make them yourself. The only thing you're going to need to buy is a little master link, a little box of master links. And sometimes when you order chain, a whole bunch of these will come with it. These are going to be uh, what we're going to, how we're going to connect the chain. So, how do we know how long to make the chain? Well, if we check our bars, we'll see on this, written on the side of our bars here is going to be a tooth count. See this one here. I'm making a chain for a small bar here. This is a little 16 incher, I believe, because I want to use this for ripping. I don't want to have a big bar with all that exposed chain going down when I'm ripping with my chainsaw mill. So I want one short ripping chain, which we're going to do today. So 60 links. 60 links, that's what we need. What constitutes a link? Well, each one of these, see we have two rivets, we're going to count them like this, one, two, three. Each one of these side plates is considered a link. So I have taken the liberty to go ahead and to count these out, and I've painted, I thought I did, I painted one of these white, there it is, painted one of these white. This right here is the one I'm going to cut. Now remember when we're counting, we're actually going to be, we're going to count one short because we've got to add the link that we're going to use. The master link needs to be added. So actually we're going to cut to go, we're going to measure to 60 or count to 60 here and we're going to cut 60 and this is going to replace that. So how do we cut it? How do we get rid of these? Well, there's a lot of fancy specialty tools out there, but I'm going to show you a way you can do it with the tools you probably have on hand. Right. So to cut this link, what we need to do is we basically need to grind off the top and then we'll punch it through uh, with a punch. So I'm going to use a small roll lock grinder, just a little pneumatic air grinder. You can use an electric grinder. You could use a Dremel tool if that's all you have. Just be creative. You could hand file it if you had to. So let's, let's grind these off real quick. Right, so we need to drive the link out, the old link. So we're going to put our chain on some sort of an immovable surface. This is an anvil. You can use the back of your vise. Uh, you can use a chunk of railroad tie, whatever you have that's really hard, chunk of steel. And just take your small peen hammer and whack that a couple times. And what that'll do is that will expose, we can see in there now, the circles. They're starting to come out where we need to drive it. We're going to take a center punch, which is just a, chis you know, a round punch there with a, with a ground point on it. And we're going to put that right there in the center and over a hole, Oops. look at that, that's not, that's not the way to do it. Over the hole of our anvil, or, or if you do it over your vise, we're going to give this a whack. See how that drove out right there? We're going to do the same thing over here. Now you have to go over a hole, whatever your material is, so make, you know, so, because it's, so it'll go through. So we'll give that a little whack there. All right, well, yeah, took care of itself, didn't it? So now we've broke that chain, and now we can go ahead and connect these all together. Really important that we get this situated properly. You see that little groove in there? That needs to correspond with the grooves in the chain. So of course we have here, this is the top, and here's the bottom. This is the part of the tooth that rides in the chainsaw bar. You see how that's got that groove in there? It's flat on the top. This is really important. So, we'll put this uh, master link in. Double checking the groove. And now we're ready to swage the pins. A quick word on chisels. You see these, uh, you see how the striking portion of these are ground? Nice and smooth with a kind of a bit of a taper and round it on there. That's important because that will prevent uh, the chisel from fracturing in a shard of steel 
flying out into your eye or body. This right here, you can see this mushroom down on the ch under the chisel. If you have that on your chisel or you see that, like this is one that I received in a big box of tools from a garage sale, you need to take your bench grinder and grind that off so it looks more like these nice snappy tom chisels right there. That's uh, something you really want to keep an eye on. All right, with the health and safety portion of our video out of the way, we can get to the swaging. To swage, we're gonna use a ball-peen hammer. A ball-peen hammer is a machinist type of hand hammer that looks like this that has a round edge on it. What that does is it gives you, a nut, it rounds off. It kind of makes a rivet on anything that you pound on. So we'll kind of just be carefully hold this on here, try not to hit our fingers, put this on an immovable surface, steel, and we'll start swaging that pin. So this master pin here is adequately swaged. We don't want it so, to pin it so tight that we don't get any movement in here. We want the chain to be able to move and to bend around the sprockets, uh, but we also want it to be tight. We don't want to have any, any wiggling back and forth. So you can kind of see there that ball pin hammer has put a nice little riveted edge on it, and that's all there is to it. So if you break a chain, or you uh, want to change the length of a chain, let's say you have a bar you don't use anymore, or a damaged link or something, with just these little master links, and the little process or the process that I told you, uh, you can repair your own. So if I counted my links correctly, everything should fit perfectly. What we want to go for, and you know, if you may find that you want to even adjust the link count from what the bar says. I mean, you, it depends. I've seen it. I've seen it not be exactly the best. But when we tighten this up here, uh, this is a little still uh, MS260, one of the legendary saws, pro saws. And we tight, look at that, we tighten that up. This is what we want. We want the adjustment to come tight right in the middle. So we've got adjustment this way, the same forward and back. So we've got a lot of room to play with right there. That's, uh, that's good, that's exactly what we want. So this little saw, this is a light saw for, for ripping, of course, but uh, just doing small stuff, this little edging on two by material is what like I'm doing, it'll be just fine. And that way I don't have to keep pulling my big saw out of the Grandberg chainsaw mill. I can just hook this onto the mini mill and it really speeds things along. So we'll tighten this up and we'll go try it out and see how it works. supposed to be here. This is for next week. Get out of here. I know. That's just mean. It's just mean, isn't it? Well, I'm, I'm only one man here. I, I, do, I do the best that I can. So you'll see I'm wearing a Rogue Tool t-shirt. Rogue is a new official Wrangler Star sponsor and sponsor of the channel. What does it mean to be a sponsor of a channel? It means that I called them, told them I liked their tools, and asked them to send me some. So they did, they sent the tools that I wanted and I'm going to be sharing those with you. Why did I contact them? Because I think they produce the best garden and hand tools in the country. So I'll look for those next week. Now's the time. There's a little thumbs up button down there. You can click it uh, and I would appreciate that. You know, it's interesting, an interesting fact. I was looking at my analytics the other day and I have, uh, I think it's somewhere near around 120,000 subscribers. How many of those do you think are active subscribers? An active subscriber would be someone who has commented or watched a video in the last 30 days. Of those 120,000, it's 29,000. So it's a pretty small number. And that's typical across the board for most YouTube creators. It's actually a little bit high. So that's why those of you who are loyal and faithful to the, to the channel, uh, that's why I need your support. And your commenting and, and thumbs upping uh, really helps. I mean, there's... The, those numbers are, are kind of deceitful because uh, there are it really is a pretty small group of us still so thanks for watching a big weekend coming up i'm uh, getting ready to go clean up and head over to the fresh peas tonight we are having a huge party and a wood-fired oven pizza cook so i'll try to bring my video camera along also if you thought that the fresh pea was only about cooking videos you are wrong two videos three videos ago she put up uh, her trip to the Oregon coast. She's a kite surfer and a good one. So you know what kite surfing is? It is a big sport out here and it is pretty, pretty fantastic. Uh, so 
uh, go on over there and check that out. The Fresh Pea, Fresh Princess, my sister. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.